G'day guys, it's John from The Productive Garden here and today I'm just going to do a bit of a, a question and answer session. Now this one is going to be about worms and worm farms. I've had a few questions on my videos on worm farms about that and I'll put a link down in the information bar to those two videos if you haven't already seen them and you can go and have a look at them. But yeah, I've had a few questions so I thought I'd go through them even though I've answered them in the comments section but I mean really who wants to trawl through comments to to look for an answer to a question they have. So I thought if I do a video, if people have got the same question or something similar and they haven't really wanted to put a comment and ask it, they feel it's silly or anything like that, um, don't ever think that a question's silly. If you're not sure about something, just ask me if I can answer it. I'll certainly answer it for you. Anyway, so here's the questions. <clears throat> Ox4 Ox Polluter has asked or has said for the past four or five days, I've had little bugs in there and I don't know what they are, but they but they look at first glance like tiny white eggs, but up close you can see them moving. I also found a maggot in there. Will this be a problem for the worm farm? If so, do you have any ideas of getting rid of them? Well, I don't worry too much about things unless it's something that's going to eat the worms, which there aren't a terrible lot of insects that do that. Um, they're mostly things like birds and that sort of thing that eat worms. If there's maggots in there, maybe you've got a bit of meat or dairy in there and that attracted some few flies to lay maggots. Um, the little white things are just normal, um, what you would call fauna, inside the inside the worm farm. So I wouldn't worry about that. I generally don't worry about little larvae and things inside the worm farms. I just let them be. Um, if you are worried about them, just make sure you don't put um, meat and dairy in there. That'll keep the maggots away. Um, the little white ones, you won't get rid of them. Like I said, they're, they're just a normal fauna inside a worm farm. Okay, and he also asked, or he or she also asked, um, I've set up my first worm farm today and was wondering how long the worm castings last when harvested. Do they go bad if left in or, or can they be stored for as long as you want? Well, leave the worm, comes in, worm castings in the worm farm for as long as you like. Um, eventually, when the top tray is full, you're going to have to empty the bottom tray so that you can move them all around. But while they're in the worm farm, they've been kept moist. They've got air going through them. The worms can still move down through, up and down through the trays and they'll be fine. As far as storing them in a bag, you could probably do that. I think they might go bad a bit. I would probably tend, once you empty that bottom tray, just put it under the plants that you want it, want to put it under, spread it under. It only needs a handful in, for each plant, or, or maybe two if it's a bigger tree. Um, and then it becomes the top tray and you start putting the food in that. So no need to store it. May as well use it straight away, put the benefit where you want it right away. That's what I would do. But yeah, in, in the worm farm, if you're filling up the top tray and you don't want to empty the bottom tray yet, then yeah, leave the bottom tray there. It'll, it'll be fine there until you've filled the top tray and you want to rotate the trays around. Right, Nick Platt asked, why do you need worm farms and what do you guys use it for? Well, I guess you don't need a worm farm. The reason I have a worm farm and what I use it for is I use it to convert food waste into useful um, organic material that I can use to feed my, my plants and my gardens. You get the, the worm tea, the liquid that you can mix in your watering can and water it on your veggies and other plants and you get the worm castings that you can spread around your plants and, and get that that nutritional benefit from it. Um, you could always chuck your food scraps in the bin and they become waste in a, in a um, landfill somewhere and you get no use for them or you can put them in a worm farm, convert them into something that can be useful and beneficial to your plants. So that's, that's why I have them and that, um, that's what I use them for. <clears throat> Alright, Annette SA said, other videos that I've watched put newspaper in with the food scraps. Do you know why? Does it matter? Also, some people have suggested putting air holes in the container with food scraps and worms along the side. Is it necessary? Okay, so the newspaper thing. Why do they put the newspaper in the bottom? Basically, that'll be in the, the very bottom tray to stop worms and dirt falling through the bottom into the area where the liquid um, collects. And yeah, you could do that, it's no worries. Eventually that newspaper will break down by the time you fill that all the containers and you're ready to empty the bottom one and replace it up the top. But um, depending upon the size of your holes, may or may not be necessary. So it's it's a bit of a personal thing. If you want to put newspaper in, in, um, in the tray, you can only do it when you first set it up, which will be when the the, um, the dirt will tend to be least compact and more likely to fall through. Um, because if you do that for all of them, if you put newspaper in the top tray when you're putting food through, eventually, or the worms won't be able to move easily up and down until they've eaten a hole through the newspaper. 
but eventually that newspaper will break down, the worms will eat it, and by the time it gets to the bottom, there'll be no newspaper there anyway. So um, I don't think it's necessary, but newspaper torn up if you're short of food scraps or if your worm farm is a bit um, too moist, then torn up newspaper, shredded paper, can be a good thing to put in there to, to soak up some of that that um, excess moisture and, and give it a bit of dryness and make it more habitable for the worms. And it's a good thing to put in there anyway. Um, doesn't matter, I think I've answered that, no, pretty not, why? Um, air holes in the container. I don't have air holes in mine. Um, they're not um, a perfect seal by any means, they're not an airtight seal. I don't think that air holes are really required all that much. My worms do well without air holes. Um, I haven't really seen a commercial one with air holes put in it. If you had one that was that sealed very well, um, certainly you might need air holes because if they don't have access to oxygen to normal air, um, they would they would suffocate um, eventually. Um, as they move through the soil, they drag air through the soil and that sort of thing. So unless unless you've got a perfect seal in your worm farm, which I doubt many people would have, I don't think holes are, are really all that necessary. Okay, and an SA also asked, are there any plants that don't like worm tea? Um, I don't think there are any. I haven't been able to find any. The only um, the only thing that might be a problem is if that worm tea is a bit too alkaline or acid, but generally it's fairly neutral. Um, but if it's going to change the pH of your soil terribly that's going to affect the plant, that might be a problem. But other than that, I think all plants pretty much love it. Okay, Jillabuster said, um, when I come to making my own worm farm, can I just transfer worms from my garden compost bin straight into the second box together with some of the compost they are already living in? Um, the worms that you put in to a worm farm are worms that, um, that are adapted to that sort of living. They tend to live in a shallower level of soil. They're the ones that normally live in the leaf mulch and that sort of thing and don't generally go deep, deep into the soil. The ones in your compost could be that type of worm, but are probably more likely just normal earthworms, which tend to range fairly deep and then come up and, and they, they range a fair bit through the depth of the soil. So they might not like it in your compost. Also, the compost worms eat a lot more food than your, than your normal earthworm. They have, they have a much greater appetite, and that's why they're good for, for worm farms, because they'll eat a lot of food very quickly. But having said that, if you want to get some out of, your, out of your compost and put them in your worm farm, it's worth a try. If they work, Great. If um, if they don't work and you've got to get some actual worm farm um, specific worms, then you can tackle that, that bridge when you come across it. But yeah, if you if you want to try the, the worms that are in your compost bin, they may very well be the type of worm that is suitable for a worm farm. Okay, so yeah, give it a try by all means. I'm I'm all in, in favour of trying things. If it works, great. If it doesn't, try something else, see if that works. No problem with that at all. And CoreFX04, or CoreFX04, I'm not sure how you say it, has asked, where, where can I get those containers online? Well, there may be places you can get them online. I just got them at a local hardware shop. But basically what you're looking for is a con containers of, a, of around about 20 litres, or I think that's about four, four or five gallons, if you use gallons. Um, <clears throat> better off getting containers that are... Um, that don't let any light through. So you want a solid sort of container, not a, a slightly clear or opaque cut container that's gonna get some light through. So black ones are good. The yellow lid on mine's all right. I don't tend to get things sprouting. The reason I, you want a solid container that's not gonna let light through is if you've got um, potato peels, maybe the, the tops of carrots, the tops of beetroot, those sorts of things, if they've got light, once they start sprouting and they've got light coming through, there can be enough light and they'll just keep growing and you'll end up with might not be a bad thing, but you end up with a whole lot of things growing in your worm farm. And the worms will only eat dead vegetable matter. They won't eat live vegetable matter. So if you've got things growing in your worm farm, the worms won't eat them. Okay, so you don't really want that, although, like I said, it might not be a bad thing. They, they might be something that you, maybe you can just transfer them, transplant them to your garden and have some potatoes or um, grow some sort of mutant carrot from the carrot top or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's why you want things with a solid container that light doesn't come through. Um, I like a lid that clips on because it makes it harder for vermin to get in there, rats and those sorts of things. Um, especially in the US where you've got raccoons, you want something that you can clip on fairly solid. And 20, 20 litres, 4 to 5 gallons is about 
um, I think the smallest you really want to go to because you want to be able to put some food in there you want enough room for all the worms to to live to, to range up and down through the worm farm um, you don't want small containers and if if you want to build it bigger by all means go for it the only thing you'll have to think about is how heavy those containers are going to be when they're full of worm castings obviously that that is a consideration to, to keep in mind but yeah that's just the minimum 20 liters is about the minimum okay so that's all the questions I have for you today by all means if you have any questions um, put them down below whether they're on worm farms whether they're about anything else at all I'm more than happy to answer your questions and that's why I do this stuff because it's what I love doing and if I've got an idea that helps someone else that's great I love that anyway that's it for now we'll see you next time happy productive gardening